Sustainable Resource Management, Basic Principles and Practices. I'm Wynne Copley. I hold a Master of Arts in Communication, and I'm co-developer of this Sustainable Resource Management 1013 course through Kankakee Community College and the Illinois Recycling Association. What sustainability is? Well, if any of you have been in the environmental field for very long, or had an interest in it, then your definition of sustainability may be different than what you see on the screen. For businesses, sustainability is a different terminology than what it means to those with an environmental outlook. It may not mean the three-legged stool of people, planet, and profit as it does in the general uh, definition of sustainability. For business, it means about thriving in the long term. In the natural world, for an ecologist or scientists in other disciplines, sustainability means, again, the ability to survive and thrive over the long term, but with a resilience in our ecosystems, a biodiversity in the organisms and species that are alive and that are interdependent upon each other. With a business angle, traditional business has to do with inputs, transformation, and outputs. A business model takes in materials or people or information, and the very nature of business is that they transform those inputs and add value to them in their application of their unique business model, business skills, technology, whatever it might be. And the outputs then are the saleable products and services that earn that business their profit. No business stays in business for very long without earning a profit. So profitability is the first measure of success in business. Sustainability is really a new set of eyes, a new vision for how they make key business decisions these days. And a really important final point is at the bottom of the screen. Note that it is bolded. Any bolded or highlighted or italicized statement throughout my Wynn Copley's lectures for this course will mean that you should probably pay extra attention and possibly you will see this point of information at a later date in a quiz or a test. One important measure of sustainability is efficiency. And in fact, when speaking to a business audience, I can interchange the term efficiency with sustainability. Waste materials are a measure of inefficiency and unsustainability. Look in the trash can or dumpster. If there's materials in there, these days it means somebody made a design mistake or somebody made a purchasing or use mistake. There should be absolutely minimal packaging, trimmings, and so forth. Sustainability could be seen as an accounting problem. Those with an accounting background know that your assets, the total amount of your assets, are equal to your liabilities plus your equity, capital. Waste has traditionally been seen as a liability that reduces your equity. But the truth is that with that newly focused vision, waste is no longer waste. In fact, waste isn't waste until it's wasted. What we have formally determined to be waste are in fact resources to be managed. And resources are an asset. Tre treating discarded resources as an asset not only reduces in liabilities, but it increases equity and puts a completely different attitude and spin on the material resources coming through any business or any office or organization. Value is the difference. Again, tune up that vision. Assets have positive value. Disposal is a method of managing discarded materials. Disposal can mean reuse, recycling, composting, 
It's not just a matter of trashing or landfilling. Disposal is a management method, and certain methods can retain or destroy value, as shown in this cartoon illustration by my friend and colleague Nancy Gorell. Recycling in a source-separated type system is actually orderly and retains value, as opposed to landfilling or incineration which crunches a, a variety of mixed materials together, makes them difficult to separate and to recover that material value. Sustainable resource management is material asset management. No business manager these days is going to turn a blind eye to material asset management. So in addition to profits, in addition to employees or people, in addition to outputs, asset management also means materials that we formerly thought of as discards or trash. This is a municipal supply. We sometimes refer to it as municipal solid waste. Now that's getting to be a really outdated term these days. The truth is that, again, with that rethink, with that different set of glasses on, the entire municipal supply of discards is a community asset. In fact, there is case history law that shows garbage is indeed a commodity. A commodity is an asset that resource asset should be managed for the public benefit, for the overall public good. Wasting this asset is indeed unsustainable. Zero waste is a true term. We're shooting for zero. It's zero or darn close, folks. I'm just here to tell you after 20 years in this business that if your community or your organization has worked and gotten to the point where it is separating for reuse, recycling, composting, some beneficial use, returning materials to the economic stream rather than to a landfill or incineration to the discard stream, you are practicing zero waste. You're pretty darn close to it. Full zero waste does indeed maximize assets and minimize liabilities. I want you to be careful when you are reading or researching terminology and a business approach to managing discards. If a company is claiming zero waste to landfill, that may not be true zero waste. It's more or less an industrial approach and often allows residuals, those fine materials, mixed materials that are difficult to recover for recycling or reuse. The zero waste to landfill approach may allow them to be incinerated to recover their energy. That may be one step better than total landfilling or incineration with no recovery of energy, but still is a relative form of wasting. It's not true zero waste. What sustainable resource management does is it accounts for all steps in a resource material's life. Where did that source come from in the natural world? Is it leaving a hole in the environment somewhere? Certainly there are always costs of extraction. And the film we will see just a little later in this course, The Story of Stuff, presents a particular view on the costs of material extraction, including refining and the distance to the processing and markets for the use of the materials. Sustainable resource management asks, what is this item or materials practicality and durability? What is its intended use? Is it indeed the best material that we can use for the long term rather than a short term one use product that we then quote unquote throw away? Folks, there is no away when we throw things away. Those items and materials end up somewhere, notably often in the landfill, and sometimes unfortunately in our uh, municipal sanitary system as a liquid. 
We have lots of options for recovery at the end of a product's useful life. Sustainable resource management considers all of those first before it would ever consider discarding. We manage our inputs for and outputs for highest and best use. We observe and honor the values that are embedded in a material throughout its life cycle, such as they did in the old days. There is energy embedded in that product and human labor. There's cultural value in manufactured objects and of course the raw materials, the natural resources represented. Sustainable Resource Management, SRM, does put a higher value on renewable resources than on non-renewables. By renewable, I mean an item or material that can be replenished, something we can grow more of within a reasonable time. Now, the only truly renewable resource I'm aware of is trees and those paper materials, fiber materials, that produce paper or some form of paper. But minerals and ores for such items as glass and metals, petroleum byproducts such as those used to produce plastics, those in no way, shape, or form are considered to be quote unquote renewable. These things cannot easily be regenerated in any short amount of time. Best practices in SRM include basing your analysis and purchasing decisions on the life cycle and efficacy in the long term of that item or material. Now the industry standard, the old hierarchy for managing wastes, both on the state of Illinois and national level, is in this picture. The old Waste Management Hierarchy Pyramid. Back in the mid and late 80s, many states and the U.S. were adopting laws based on this hierarchy of most preferred to least preferred option for managing of what was then largely considered to be waste. Well, we could prevent it. We could minimize it. We could reuse materials. We could recycle materials. And as that pyramid got bigger, at the base, it actually reflected the reality of what went on. For the first 15 years in the age of managing municipal solid waste. The question at the bottom is serious. What needs improving on this picture? Well, there's far more disposal going on in this graphic representation than prevention, reuse, or recycling. In the last few years, that perception and that pyramid of actions has actually been flipped into a newer hierarchy for managing, again, wastes, waste materials, the waste management hierarchy. The pyramid is flipped, as you'll notice, and it does put a lot more emphasis, and there's a lot more territory covered in this pyramid with reduction and reuse, recycling and composting, and energy recovery with treatment and disposal, meaning landfilling and or incineration, as the least preferred method at the bottom, at the tip of the pyramid. And in your class discussions, you all should discuss what's better about this picture and what might still need improving. Personally, I think this picture still uses the old-fashioned viewpoint of discards as wastes rather than as resources to be managed. Both the old and new hierarchy are based on the old Earth Day three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And the reduce, reuse, recycle three R's do come in that order. Reduce it first, see if you can avoid it, reuse it, be common sense, buy durables, buy in bulk if you can, reuse as much as possible before you actually end up having to recycle, preferably, before you finally must actually dispose 
or discard. Recycling means to take an item and change its form substantially in some way. Create it into a new usable item to return it to the useful economic stream. Re composting is included under recycling. It's a subcategory. It is a form of recycling that substantially changes the form of organic materials and makes a new useful material to be returned to the economic stream in the form of soil amendment known as compost or soil additive. Unfortunately, even in recycling, cultural labor and energy values are somewhat lost. Not completely, but somewhat. And one of my favorite old school presentations had to do with the fourth R. There are a lot of fourth R's that are possible. Rethink, rot, repurpose, and so forth. Again, in your class discussions, you should attempt to come up with these. Recycling, the first R to be developed after Earth Day 1970. The grandmother of all sustainability initiatives, possibly the oldest, and most widely practiced conscious conservation choice in the world. But please note, it's the lowest value R option for sustainability. In fact, reduce and reuse come first. Recycling rate or recovery rate. A community's recycling rate is expressed as a percentage of its overall total discards. In the old days, we used to say waste. Many jurisdictions, many cities and counties across the nation are now reporting recovery of up to 80%. The calculation looks like this. If you have had to waste 25%, 25 tons or 25 pounds, but you've recovered 75 pounds or tons for reuse, for recycling or for composting, that total overall number means what was generated for discard, 75% was recovered or recycled, 25% was wasted. Notice that a recycling rate usually includes reuse and composting. Often these are thought of as subsets of recycling. But a recovery rate is actually more an accurate term than recycling rate. The SRM hierarchy. In June 2011 in Springfield, Illinois, my hometown, the sustainable resource management hierarchy was created and with the group's consensus on these next four slides, we show an entirely different way to think about resource management. The report from the EPR Zero Waste Retreat in 2011 in Springfield, Illinois. This was made possible through the support of the Illinois Recycling Association, Urban Ore in Berkeley, California, the Institute for Local Self-Reliance in Washington, D.C., Avram Systems Conference Center in Springfield, Illinois, Maldener's Restaurant and Food Fantasies, both located in Springfield, Illinois, with thanks to Wynn Copley for organizing the retreat and John Bradford of Interface Global for producing these slides as part of the group's thinking. Here it is. All major sectors in our economy and in our communities have a responsibility to retool their thinking and to do things a little differently in order to support sustainable resource planning. Each group has a little bit of responsibility. The producers, the manufacturers, the retailers, those who sell it, the consumers, all of us who purchase what is being sold or what's available out there. Government has a particular responsibility to lead by example. Here is the new SRM hierarchy. This SRM hierarchy recognizes first and foremost that reducing and reusing must be embraced before recycling and composting and certainly will try its best to say no landfilling and no incineration 
is the goal. That's zero waste recovery, folks, smack dab in the middle. And if you will notice, off to the right in yellow, denoting caution here, folks, reducing means EPR, extended producer responsibility. Highest and best use, source separation to lend that value to both reuse, recycling, and composting. EPR should be exercised with caution. That's the purpose of that yellow color. And the big, you know, you're familiar with the red slash across things that we try to avoid, incineration and landfilling, definitely means put the brakes on, stop, don't go here. But notice along the bottom, the foundation holding up those other two concepts is active reuse, recycling, and composting listed in green. Full go. Pull out all the stops. Full speed ahead for reuse, recycling, and composting to include each of the specific actions listed under those categories. Now this is a design, a general design, put out by Urban Ore and I believe put on paper by Mark Gorell. This design, if you will follow the arrows from the far, first it starts in the upper right corner because that's a roadway, but then starts with the arrows starting in at the upper left corner into this resource recovery center. And this is sort of set up like an airport, as Dan Knapp likes to say, in that it's designed for one-stop shopping so that the loads come in so that reusing is dropped off first, everything that's reusable. And then you come on into the, the site or the facility to drop off recyclables. Then you drop off things that can be reclaimed, such as appliances and hazardous waste. Then you drop off those materials that can be composted or aggregate materials for crushing, such as brick and ceramic. And at the very last and hopefully most expensive station, is the wasting station where things will ultimately end up being landfilled or incinerated for energy recovery. Dan and Mary Lou want us to notice the enterprise clusters. If a city or county government were to provide this sort of resource recovery station, it could actually rent these stations out to vendors who want to be there every day, capturing these materials for reuse, recycling, composting, crushing, and so forth. Extended producer responsibility is a relatively new term in the industry of waste management or sust sustainable resource management. There are some good examples and some not so good examples out there of extended producer responsibility. Those materials that deserve to be um, controlled in some way through stewardship organizations such as the Product Stewardship Institute or the Product Policy Institute. Typical products include electronics, batteries, paint, treated lumber, those items that in some way potentially could pollute or contaminate our environment those things deserve to be controlled in a closer manner and in fact government has a large role to step in here and see to it that those materials are managed in an environmentally responsible manner but EPR laws and programs fall squarely in that yellow caution area at the top of the SRM hierarchy because there are some examples especially in places like Ontario and British Columbia in Canada, where EPR laws that were intended to do good for the public and protect the public's health have really kind of gone overboard and instead of just protecting public health have put onerous responsibilities on business owners, recyclers, reusers, and composters, and those who might have otherwise come up with a useful purpose for reusing or recycling items are not allowed to do so because those items are included in the strong EPR language in those government jurisdictions. 
So here in America, in California, New York, some of the places like Wisconsin where extended producer responsibility and or outright bans have been implemented, we need to take a lesson from our neighbors to the north and not put a limit on the open economy, a market-driven avenue of business. Residuals. After you've done all the reducing, reusing, and recycling, if you can, those items that are left over should either be the subject of a ban or producer responsibility or both. We suggest in Zero Waste that we really shouldn't put things into the landfill or incinerate it or, goodness sake, we shouldn't be sending it to other countries. That is just pushing our residual problems and potential pollution off onto other countries that likely have weaker laws and infrastructure setups than we do here in the United States. There's a huge economic impact related to sustainable resource management. I got to tell you folks, there's a whole lot more jobs involved in the collecting, sorting, crushing, shredding, washing, bailing, loading, transporting, and using materials as feedstock in manufacturing than there ever are in wasting methods of any kind. Do a little research, pick up the phone, call your local landfill, ask how many total employees they have. Then look up the number and call your local recycling center and ask how many employees they have. When you look at the tons that are handled by that local landfill or incinerator, versus the tons that are handled by the local recycling center or composter, you will notice a distinct and drastic difference in the number of hands on board. There's a whole lot more jobs in reusing, recycling, and composting than there are in trashing of any sort. And we have to give a lot of credit to Illinois DCEO, Commerce and Economic Opportunity Department. They joined forces with the IRA, Recycling Association, and did a study that clearly showed the strong impact that recycling and reusing has on Illinois' economy. That study is due to be renewed here in the near future. Sustainable resource management, what you can do. Evaluate your local policies. Does your community or your organization have the infrastructure and service providers available to implement a good sustainable resource management system? Scale your plans to your intended purpose, whether you're planning for a single business, a business park, just a household, or an entire community. Consider baseline measurements to tell you where you are now. Goals with reachable benchmarks, reasonable timelines, and ways to evaluate your process. Businesses, consider those items in your dumpsters. You know what, they are your assets. You paid for them coming in the door, now you're gonna pay for them going out the door. Please consider whether it's the highest and best use or you're on an old treadmill that's now a little outdated. Sustainable resource management, what you can do number two. As a business, find the most efficient closed loop methods possible and use them. Look for the least impact. This reduces risk to the environment, to your staff, and your community and organization. Form a green team. Ask folks to engage. Ask them to analyze what they do day to day and how they might cut down on the amount of materials in the dumpster through reuse, recycling, or composting. If you're a manufacturer, check out Lean Manufacturing, Six Sigma, and the International Standards Organization series of rating. Many of these use zero waste as a foundation for their planning. Sustainable resource management most definitely is in your future. Any business worth its weight in salt cannot afford to be inefficient these days. And sustainable resource management means getting rid of what we formerly thought of as trash, considering them as resources to be managed as an asset, figuring out what you can do to engage your employees or the members of your organization. Stay aware of recent trends and practices and services available in your community. 
sustainability does mean stability in the USA. If you like word finds like I do and you tease it out, you will find stability in USA in that word, sustainability. Thank you for your attention.